Thanks for joining me, Brent Spencer 4.0. Always happy to have you here and uh, always happy to have coffee with you. You're a great conversationalist and a coffee company, uh, actually. Um, while I have you, I have a question for you. The steel industry is one of the pillars of our society. Things are either made of steel or they are made by machines that are made out of steel. Uh, and one of the most important parts within the steel manufacturing chain really is the rolling mill. Speaking of the rolling mill and specific hot rolling, how important is it that we get uh, the data from the entire rolling process and visualize it? Okay. So yeah, at least you, you really do a good things by specifying hot rolling, mm -hmm. because steel manufacturing includes hot part and cold part. Hot is more to pre-process and prepare the metal for the, the next phase. And uh, cold rolling, it's more to give properties to the steel mm -hmm. and um, finishing or surface coating, specifically achieve some properties that are required for the production that you, tar that you target. Mm -hmm. The interest of focusing on hot area, uh, it's because in the chain of steel production, it's one of the very first steps. And it can happen that some defects are happening already in this section, which is one of the really early stages. But then if you have a defect that occurs there because of some specific conditions, we will discuss a bit after maybe. But if you have a defect that happens there, this defect can even be more elongated after consequence, uh, subsequent rollings in cold area and also in cold, mm -hmm. in hot and in cold. So one defect that maybe is a scratch on uh, several centimeters on the surface of the coil. Mm -hmm. And then when you continue to roll to flatten and elongate this product, the small defect that you have can actually become meters and even hundreds of meters on the end. And these sections of the, the metal product will have to be cut before sending to the customers. Or even worse, they will be sent to customers that will send back the product because it doesn't match their quality requirements. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So really a small, uh, a small problems that you can have in hot rolling can have huge consequences afterwards. So what we want to do is detect as early as possible if we have problems there to avoid this. Uh, and also associated to that, the quality itself, there is the cost of processing. Because it costs a lot of energy to manipulate steel. Mm -hmm. So every time, even in the cold area, we have to reheat the coil to process it in correct way. Mm -hmm. So to, um, to break the structure, to give new structure, to apply some specific coating or treatment, you always need to reheat and put a lot of uh, energy to that. So if you know that you have a defect at the beginning called in a hot part, you know also that this product doesn't need to go up to the, all the process stages. Okay. And you will save a lot of time and also production costs if you detect it. But really important in this hot area to precisely know what's happening and to be sure that you correctly detect potential problems. Okay. Now we're consuming all this data. We're rather gathering it, visualizing it so that we know to do after the fact, after things happen. Is there any more benefits that we can derive from this data using data science and artificial intelligence, some of the pillars of, uh, of industry 4.0? And what are those benefits? So do you mean the techniques that we can use? Specifically, what is the value that we can get using AI mm -hmm. okay. uh, applied to this, this <clears throat> data? Yeah. So the value we can get is quite clear. And the value you can get is to avoid all these consequences of production mm -hmm. and we can achieve it in several ways. Uh, so of course, detecting any issue that, uh, that would be happening. And by that, we have to detect some specific small patterns in data that cannot be seen or interpreted by human eyes. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes just even something that you can see, but you cannot always have a look on the data constantly and point out at the moment that it shows up. So you also need some kind of automated system that will recognize these situations and that will inform people that something's happening. So the goal indeed is to, when there is something specific happening, you really want to detect and track this event 
So afterwards, we can trigger some uh, some corrective operations. Okay. So it can be just to cancel the production of this specific item, to avoid the, the operational cost that uh, that comes afterwards, or it can be to give recommendations to people of what they could adjust in the line or in the next steps to at least fix a bit the defect that was generated by this path. Okay. So if you have scratches, maybe you have to apply more um, grinding on the surface to, to make it more, more smooth, more polished. Apply different setting in coating, maybe different heating conditions and cold running as well mm -hmm. to try to correct the defect. Understood. Now, speaking of the value we get from from AI applied to to the data coming from the rolling mill, is it possible that uh, some of the ma machine learning techniques provide us with insights we were unaware thus far that are affecting the quality or mm -hmm. of the product or the or the life of the asset, the health of the yes. asset? So actually, yes, it's happening quite often. So we have always kind of two phases in this type of project. The first one is really where we blend everything with uh, data science methods. All the data is going there. So it comes up with everything that is going outside of what is normal or some extreme conditions mm -hmm. that you need to relate to something. So we always need to discuss uh, in constant interaction with process teams so they can explain to us actually what's happening there. Mm -hmm. If it's something that they know, maybe it's a specific condition that they know were bad and we need to remove them from the data mm -hmm. because it's not relevant to use. They can confirm also some observations. So they can see some specific correlations between points that they know will lead to some problems or to some good quality. And um, they can also uh, find out that some data correlations were not known yet. Mm -hmm. And it happens often actually when we start to combine data from several equipment. So for example, if you work with a rolling mill, the rolling mill itself maybe doesn't have any specific differences in the way it works. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the equipment that is before in the line, so maybe mm -hmm. the oven that reheats the slab or the rougher that will make a first uh, flattening of the, of the product, if you combine these components together, you can see that specific conditions maybe in the rolling mill mm -hmm can be avoided if you know already the data from the previous sections. Understood. You will take a larger picture. Yeah, exactly. And this larger picture is not easy to detect in the, by humans. Mm -hmm. Because also you need to synchronize in time the product to know exactly when it was in the different sections of the line, to be able to map exactly a defect position when it appears on the surface of the coil to a specific moment that it went and all the different sensors that we have in previous steps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Excellent. It sounds really interesting. Um, we got to go back to work, mm -hmm. but uh, thanks for taking the time and having coffee with me. My Appreciate pleasure. It. It was a pretty good time. See you next time.